Um, I'm going to invite up Phil Rivera, Rivera from the Registrar's Governmental and Legislative Affairs Division. He's responsible for community and voter outreach. Um, and Monica Flores, she's uh, the project manager for the Registrar's Voting Systems Assessment Project, uh, which is really the future of voting in LA County, especially with recent past legislation. But yeah, let's introduce it. Right. Monica Flores, we're from the Registrar's Office. I oversee outreach opportunities, and Monica's going to talk to you a little something about the new uh, voting system that you're all going to be voting with in the near future. Initially, Cliff contacted me, and he said, hey, can you come up and give people some key election dates, some things to look out for, maybe some best practices for our students? I said, yeah, I can do that. that that's an easy lift. But then he stood up here and he started talking about the power to change. And I heard it's like, uh, Luis Brent referenced 311. Uh, the app from the mayor's office. He is, this allows people to take action. Well, what I want to talk about today, since he did mention that, is the power you guys have to make change. See, Los Angeles County is the largest voting jurisdiction in the nation, and that's daunting to some people when you think about there's 10 million people in Los Angeles County. Out of that 10 million, there's about 6 million that are eligible to vote. And at this time, we've done a great job. There's about 5 million people that are registered to vote. The problem comes when we don't vote. We have the power to make change, but we don't utilize that power. Right? A couple of years ago, we went live with online voter registration, and in one day, we had nearly 90,000 people registered to vote. And the bulk of that number came from the 18 to 25 year olds. See, traditionally, in Los Angeles County, and in counties across the nation, the power has been held by the senior citizens. They've been the largest voting demographic. But now in Los Angeles County, 18 to 25 year olds they now have the numbers to counteract that senior vote. Nothing always want to counteract it, but a lot of times, you know, when you talk to kids in school, are the seniors voting with the same uh, ideals that you're voting for? Maybe not. They're voting for people, they're voting for politicians. A lot of our younger generation is voting on the issues. We gotta take back that power. The mayor, uh, Mayor Garcia, it's great, forward thinking, but you know what? All of LA County is in LA. Right? You have a pothole, we got a big federal election coming up, and that's awesome. I'm glad that people participate. But guess what? You have a pothole in your front yard, the president's not going to be able to help you out. And you call the governor, and he could try, but he's not going to be able to help you out either. You got to get involved at that local level. You got to start at home. You complain about politicians we have at those higher levels, guess where they started? They started at the local level. Once they get that ball rolling, sometimes it's a hard piece to stop. Democracy, you know, think back to high school civic days. Democracy is the government by the people. We own the government, right? Business owners, they pay all the expenses of their business. Our taxes pay the expenses of the government. Would you buy something and then buy a new car and then let it sit in your driveway? No. You gotta take advantage of that. If I have a pothole in my front yard and I call the city and they're not being responsive, I gotta call my local representatives. But guess what? Here's a little something a lot of them don't share, and some have shared with me. They wouldn't ever let me put their name on it. But if I call in and say, hey, my city's not being responsive. I've had this pothole for two weeks. I've been waiting on the city for three weeks. I say, oh, really? All right, well, let me get your name, let me get your information. The first thing they're going to do, they're going to look up my neighborhood voting history. I say, nobody in this neighborhood votes. Okay, sir, we'll take care of it. Yeah, they'll call the city. Hey, did someone put in a play ball pothole? Yeah, well, you guys get into it? Cool. They have, we have no power over that politician. But if they look it up and they say, oh wow, 98% of this neighborhood votes, they have the power to make change. If I don't do something about this pothole, I may not be reelected. Remember, we own democracy. What do the powers business owners have? They have the power to hire and fire. We have that same power. But when you combine all elections and we're only turning out at 25% and average, local elections we're only turning out to 9 to 12%. Are we able to make any change? No. And those that already have power, they're happy with that 9 or 12 because that's what got them in power. So you need to start thinking about that. You need to take action now. Registering to vote is one thing, but getting out and actually voting is another. Okay, let me step off my soapbox real quick. 
A couple tips. Okay, Cliff, I'm getting to the tips. A couple things for our students. Whether you register to vote or register, whether you register to vote here on your campus address or back home in Kansas. Okay, that option is yours. But here's the things you want to think about when you're looking at that option. Hmm. Do I want to continue living in LA after I graduate? Maybe I want to register to vote here and start having a say in the local politics here. You know? Or oh, I'm just going to school here. I'm going back to Kansas, Michigan afterwards. I want to maintain my voter registration status over there. That's perfectly okay. If you do change your status and you vote over here, it's not going to affect your financial aid. It won't affect your parents' ability to claim it on their taxes, anything like that. It's simply you're taking the power to vote here. You know, let's say uh, somebody proposed we're going to do a 50 cent sales tax on every every cup of noodles. All right, students are going to get out and vote, right? We buy those for real. We, when I was a student, we bought it for a reason. 50 cents is a lot of money when you're a student. So you want to start taking part. I need to register here and vote on these topics. So that's something to pay attention. Um, and nowadays, you can vote on, you can register online, you can register via paper with us. You let me know, we have a lot of options for you. <clears throat> Real quick, a couple key dates I want to make you aware of is October 24th is the last day to register to vote in this upcoming election. Okay, you can register past that, but you won't be able to vote on the November 8th election. So if you're getting out your registration drives, if you're motivating people, if you yourself are registering, make sure we get that done by October 24th. And then November 1st, if you're interested in being a vote by mail voter, again, LA County is not about taking away options. We're about having more options, okay? Vote by mail voters, it's a convenience. You vote by mail, you get your ballot early, put a stamp on it, and vote it. I don't trust the post office, great. The registrars work with city with uh, city clerks across the county. We have ballot drop-off locations. You go drop it off in a sealed ballot box at any of your clerk's offices. I have more information for you on our table over there. Oh, you don't want to do that? Oh, my son just turned 18, I want to go to the polls with him? Awesome, take your vote by mail ballot, trade it in at the polls, get a regular ballot. All about options. The thing is, we just want you to get out and vote. Last thing Cliff also mentioned, you know, what we're doing here is we're moving forward. We're moving forward. We don't want to be stuck in the past, right? LA County is the largest, most diverse in the nation. We can't fit into the same mold the rest of the nation is. We have more people in LA County than the population of 42 out of 50 states. We're an entity unto ourselves. So with that being said, we decided a long time ago, hey, if we're going to move forward and have successful elections, and we know that healthy elections lead to healthy communities, then we need to start modifying this voting system. We need to do it right for the people. And to speak on that a little bit more, my colleague Monica Flores. Thank you. Well, that's not fair. Jeff used to be a teacher. How am I going to speak after him? I don't know. My name's Phil. So, I'm here to talk to you a little bit uh, about the Voting Systems Assessment Project. The Voting Systems Assessment Project is the county's effort to modernize the voting system, as it been mentioned before. Um, and, as Phil mentioned, um, LA County is the largest election jurisdiction in, um, uh, the largest election jurisdiction. We have almost five million voters. Uh, we have actually six million eligible voters and a population of 10 million. It is a population that is very diverse. We provide election services in 10 languages. Um, so this is a little bit of a breakdown of of uh, the, that population. So a little bit of background on the, the, the system that we currently use to service these voters. So we currently use technology from the 1960s. Um, it is a system that is extremely outdated. Um, it is lacks flexibility for voters and for changing legislation. So needless to say, we need, it's time to update this voting system. And unfortunately for us, because we are so diverse, it isn't easy just to go up and pick up a system off the shelf. A vote, uh, voting system vendors are not developing systems that meet the needs of LA County. So we decided we would go out there and build our own system. And uh, we decided that we were going to do so in a way that brought in voters and really engaged our community. How else will we know what our voters want and need if we don't bring them into the process, right? So we launched this voting um, voter-centered design uh, process with a few goals in mind other than coming up with a new system for the county. We want to implement a voting system that is owned by you, all the voters in the county. Uh, we want to spur innovation in the voting system market because there, as mentioned, there wasn't much out there in the market. 
Um, but this was largely due to a regulatory environment that was not very flexible, did not allow or encourage innovation. So we actually also wanted to impact that regulatory environment. We wanted a LA County's model to be uh, the model for voting system development throughout the county. And we wanted to make all this research uh, and the findings available to other jurisdictions in the county. And I'm happy to say that, that these goals are well on their way. We um, have gained national recognition. A lot of other jurisdictions have approached us wondering how they can implement this in the future. And we are continuously making this information available to them and to the general public. So through this process, we've engaged approximately 3,700 diverse voters. They've uh, been engaged in surveys, focus groups, community discussions, user testing. Uh, they've just been brought into the process since it, since it launched in 2009. And these here, someone mentioned earlier about stock pictures. These are all photos of people that have been involved in this process. So this here um, is a short video um, that will show you what it is that we have come up with. We have not only developed, developed new technology, the voting system of prototypes that you see back here, but we've developed a whole new voting experience that we believe will make voting more accessible for LA County voters. To meet the evolving needs of our nearly 5 million voters, Los Angeles County is challenging traditional ideas about voting systems. The days of inking your ballot are rapidly coming to an end. In the next few years, innovations and new technology will revolutionize the way you vote. Let's take a look at some of the changes you'll see. You know how voting includes paper sample ballots for your review? Get ready for a sample ballot that is interactive and accessible, providing a flexible and trustworthy voting method. This interactive ballot will let you mark it, generate a QR code for scanning and uploading, and review your selections at a vote center on a modern, sleek touchscreen with customizable viewing options for your preferred language, text size, and contrast. Voting will be simple, efficient, and cost-effective. Using input from the voting public and engaging expert designers, Los Angeles County's voting system has been reimagined to use a high-tech ballot marking device that still produces a paper ballot for accountability and accuracy. The best part? Voters will be able to vote anywhere in the county as early as 10 days prior to the election. Are you excited yet? By pioneering a voter-centered approach to design, Los Angeles County's new voting system will maximize technology to make it easier to cast your vote and enrich your voting experience for today and tomorrow. So, a little more detail on some of the elements that were touched upon in the video. Uh, the idea of vote centers in early voting. We uh, know that the idea of voting on a Tuesday from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. is is nothing, it's not a, a, a method of voting that works really for our voters nowadays. So what we want to do is we want to expand voting to a 10-day voting period, uh, which would allow voters to also vote at any location within the county. So let's say that, for example, you, you may be registered to vote um, up in, in North County somewhere, but you, you spend your days here at USC. You would be able to vote here at a location near campus as instead of having to go to your neighborhood polling place. So we really expand your options. This uh, here is a ballot marking device which you can see here. Um, we'd be happy to give you a demo of the device if you haven't yet experienced it. It's a device that's meant to increase accessibility for voters, but retain, retain the security of a paper ballot. So again, it is a ballot marking device. Uh, so it maximizes the use of technology with, uh, with the security of the paper. Another important element to this, and this is one of the most innovative pieces of, this, of the system, is an interactive sample ballot. So what the interactive sample ballot does is it allows a voter to take their sample ballot, mark it either on a personal computer at home or a mobile device, save their selections, their selections are generated on a QR code, and then they can bring those codes into a, a vote center Scan it on the ballot marking device, which then populates the selections. You verify your selections on the screen, print your ballot, and then cast your official paper ballot. So it really it serves 
two voters. One is the voter that really wants to come in and out of the voting center uh, quickly without having to uh, you know, go from that paper, stamp the ballot with their mark selections, and then transfer this election. So it's a speed, it speeds the process. But it also helps voters with disabilities who may have specific technology that they use at home that may not be available in a polling place, or um, so they will use their technology on their home computer, mark the ballot, come in here, and scan it on the device. Finally, we've also re envisioned the vote by mail process. So. Um, we understand that not all voters will want to come into a polling place or will be able to come into a, a vote center. Some will even want to continue to vote by mail. So what we've done is we've made the vote by mail uh, package more user friendly, more accessible, easier for voters to understand in general. And all of these elements, like I've mentioned, have gone through a lot of user testing. They've gotten a lot of feedback from voters. Um, and we really believe that we've designed a, a system that will work for all, if not the majority of our voters. So currently we're in the system um, design phase, which is we're wrapping up this month. Um, and you will not see these prototypes yet in your vote centers this November. These will be available to you in 2018 um, at a limited capacity. So the idea currently is they'll be launched for early voting. Um, but in 2020, then we will expect a full rollout of the device. So before then, a few things that we still have to do, um, and which is the next steps that we're taking care of right now, is uh, identifying a manufacturer to actually build the device for us, and identifying that strategy for how we implement the system. And you can follow us on our website. Um, we have a blog where we're continuously posting, um, posting updates on the project, as well as newsletters and board reports.